Hi, my name is Timothy Trespass, and I'm a human being who has been targeted, targeted for depopulation, human experimentation, given more gallons, parasites, mites, toxins, gang stalking, covert drugs, neurotoxins, electrocution, remote neural monitoring microwave, cooking, the whole thing. Um, I wanted to speak for a moment, if I can remember. Oh yes. How many of you have read Flowers for Algernon? When I was a child, in the Hastings Elementary School in Westboro, Massachusetts, I was forced to read Flowers for Algernon. It was one in a series of Freemasonic indoctrination, mind control and fear books that I was forced to read in my earliest youth when most impressionable. Um, as children, we require Great deals, a great deal of stimulation, uh, so that our brains will develop. One of the reasons scientists claim that our bodies remain small as children, young children, is because the brain is is taking all the energy to grow. Anyway, Flowers for Algernon is a very depressing story about a young man named Charlie. Dear God. Who, um, who is mentally retarded and living in some sort of institution. He is a subject in human experimentation, whether uh, voluntarily or not is never made clear, at least not to my recollection. And he's given some kind of quote-unquote treatment to improve his uh, intelligence functioning and there's a mouse, and the mouse's name is Algernon, one of the many lab mice. And Charlie makes friends with little Algernon, and through the story you're, you're drawn in to care about A, Algernon, and B, Charlie, who through this treatment, uh, is, it's written in the form of a diary written by the first person, by Charlie. and. You know, you watch as his intelligence increases exponentially, uh, ev as evidenced through his writing, which is, describes his thinking. And Algernon, as well, is running all these mazes and doing all this amazing mouse stuff. That <clears throat> so the two are, are fairly simultaneously uh, in a tangential, uh, whatever becoming more and more intelligent. And then they reach the apex of their intelligence <clears throat> and begin to get sick, become less and less intelligent. And then Algernon dies first, and Charlie uh, has him put in a shoebox, hi, and um, puts flowers on his grave as he himself becomes less and less competent, compass mentis, until he also dies. And this book was, made a deep, deep impression on me, of course, as a child. Uh, some of the other books they made me read were The Most Dangerous Game, which is about a man who hunts people and one man's struggle for survival against this lunatic in the desert. Uh, another very disturbing book. Uh, I can't remember the others off the top of my head, but um, at this point, looking back at my life, I see some interesting parallels between myself and Charlie, myself and Algernon. Uh, we don't know if Algernon was of normal intelligence before he was treated with this uh, treatment, uh, 
whether he was a super intelligent mouse or of uh, you know common intelligence or what we don't know but um, like I said there's a great deal of parallel between myself and <clears throat> the characters of this book which uh, I can't seem to get off of my mind as uh, these things influence us deeply um, recently <clears throat> as I've had the opportunity well facing my own mortality and attempting to survive under the insanity of long-term, slow-kill murder by natural causes, unnatural application of said causes. I've been feeling very weak, very tired. I sleep almost all the time. Anxiety is difficult to face at times. It seems to come out of nowhere. Switch is switched. And at times it's difficult to determine with any accuracy the difference between the biological, physiological, organic deficits caused by parasites or the morgellates or the systemic, you know, whatever these black things are that seem to be in every cell in my body and brain and blood and organs. Um, and what is the influence of possible remote neural monitoring, uh, medusa type, silent sound, uh, microwave auditory effect weapons testing, active denial system. And what is the effect of the creatures that are living on my body and in my body, uh, weaponized, genetically modified, horrible creatures, uh, smaller than the head of a pin, most of them, which float about in the air and go into your pores and live inside of you. I believe there are several types, not just a mite, There's some black uh, little worm-like things and nematode-like things and some little tiny round black meaty things, pepper green things and some silvery sparkly clear tiny dot things and some other things I'll try to make a video of while I'm still capable. As you can see, my body has been ravaged by this disease that was given to me and Petra uh, for whatever reason. Um, the sparkle in my eyes, is it gone yet? Not quite, almost. Uh, one eye is losing the sparkle rather quickly. That's the spark of life. Photonic. Yes, I have um, these creatures living in the aqueous, in the vitreous or aqueous, aqueous humors of the eye. There's the forward and back of aqueous humors and vitreous humors. It's a fluidal um, space, sort of a gel, a liquid that keeps the eye. Anyway, when I look through the microscope, the light is magnified through my eye and the microscope is designed to focus the image to the retina on the back. And I can clearly see, even without the microscope, just looking around, I can see little lines, bundles of lines floating about with little dots. And when I looked up Spirichet uh, borealis, the one that causes Lyme disease, it's a very similar uh, picture of the organism. However, it's a, not a high power magnification. So. Anyway, uh, I'm blessed and grateful for the opportunity to share my existence, my thoughts, and my suffering with 
anyone who cares to see it. Thank you for caring, praying, for supporting us. And